In An Invitation to Sociology by Peter Berger, Berger explains what a sociologist is and what a sociologist does. This reading will also give you insight into who I am and my interests, and will also help you evaluate whether or not sociology is for you. This chapter is not only interesting, but enlightens us with a bit of humor. Berger states that a sociologist is interested in the doings of men. He includes women in this too. He wants to know why people do what they do. A sociologist observes others by eavesdropping for the sake of science and listens to gossip, which in this case is simply information about others. It's not meant to have a negative connotation. A sociologist is interested in what goes on behind closed doors in order to better understand those behind the closed doors. A sociologist should not only be interested in the causes of social problems, but in seeking the solutions to the social problems. Berger also states that if we are only interested in changing individuals, we should be warned. I'm sure we have all attempted to change a person for the betterment of that person, but have learned that a person has to want to change him or herself. As sociologists, we are focused on making generational changes, breaking the negative cycles. Several times this semester, you may experience culture shock while learning about the social problems in our society, our country, and around the world. Be warned, sociology is not just about understanding the sectors that are familiar, but also to look at and understand that which is different from our own. Throughout the semester, you will begin to view social issues in a different light and begin to understand the impact that each society, each group, and each person has on one another. It is also discussed towards the end of this reading that there is room for all disciplines and there is value in learning about all disciplines. You may be wondering about the relevance of certain GE courses throughout your college career. I know I did. But I assure you that when it comes to sociology, you will use the information again someday, and it is relevant. I understand that many of you come from different disciplines and that is great. Just keep in mind that this semester I do want you to be a sociologist and think like a sociologist, so be prepared. When we say a group of people who share territory and culture, we mean a group of people who live in the same geographic area and have similar attitudes, values, beliefs, and norms. Even though shared territory is still part of the definition of society, the widespread use of the internet for social purposes is making one's actual geographic location less relevant as time and technology advance. Social sciences are the sciences that observe and study human behaviors and human relationships. Three social sciences that are closely related and often confused for one another are anthropology, psychology, and sociology. How do anthropology and psychology differ from sociology? Anthropology focuses on understanding a specific groups, usually a tribal group's culture. An anthropologist looks at the norms, values, beliefs, artifacts, weapons, etc. of a specific group. Psychology, on the other hand, focuses on the internal happenings of the individual. These include mental processes, IQ, and personality. Sociology is the scientific study of society and human behavior. Sociology focuses on groups as the unit of analysis. We focus on external factors and how they affect individuals. For instance, we can look at the groups individuals belong to and how those groups affect the behavior of their members, as well as how the behavior of individuals affects the groups to which they belong. I always say that once you have two people, you have sociology. One of the goals of sociology is to understand the meaning of behavior. We are always attempting to understand why people make the choices they make and behave the way they do. When I say to understand, I do not necessarily mean condone their behaviors, but simply to frame a person's behaviors within their social context rather than our own and try to discover some of the reasons that they do what they do. This process is known as the sociological perspective or sociological imagination. For example, in the media, you often see or read about people who do some crazy things, especially when the story is about someone who has broken the law. When we hear about criminal activity, do we automatically say to ourselves, what an idiot? As sociologists, our goal is to understand why people are, are criminals and not just be quick to judge them. A newborn baby does not think, when I get older, I want to be a drug dealer. 
As sociologists, we need to look at the social forces that influence a person's choices, beliefs, and behavior, and try to discover cause and effect relationships. Another goal of sociology is to describe, explain, and predict human behaviors and social phenomenon. When we explain why something is happening, we use sociological concepts, terms, and theory in our explanations. This is what you will be doing with the writing assignments in this class. Sociological analysis is describing, explaining, and predicting. Predicting is best described as looking at patterns of behavior and making generalizations. For instance, if we look at an individual who has come from a family of alcoholics, one of the predictions is that the individual will also become an alcoholic. We are not stereotyping. We do not say to a person, oh, your parents are alcoholics? Well, you're going to be an alcoholic too. What studies have shown us is that there is a high probability of this happening. Not that it is inevitable, but that statistically speaking, this is the most common outcome. We'll be covering the other outcomes later. What we do with this information is note that this is a pattern of behavior and strive to develop and implement programs to try to break the cycle. Sociology is interested in solving the social problems and the only way to do this is to understand as much as we can about the problem itself. The focus of a social problems course is not only to understand the major social problems our society faces, but also take steps to help alleviate or solve these problems. The purpose of education is not knowledge, but action. I actually got this fortune in my cookie when I had Chinese food a few weeks ago. It was just so perfect for this course that I had to share it with you. Note, I do not regularly base my lecture material on information found in free Asian pastries. <laughs> what makes us behave the way we do? What causes us to make the choices we make? We are all a product of social forces. Social forces are social factors that cause us to behave the way we do and make the choices we make. We like to think that we are all very independent and not affected by anything or anyone when we make certain decisions. However, that is not the case. There are three main social forces that affect us. History, culture, and environment. The time in history we were born, raised, and currently live in definitely affects our decision. Think of the cultural values and beliefs you were taught throughout your socialization and the choices you made in accordance with them. One example. Take a man who you would consider a racist. He makes derogatory comments and uses slurs towards racial minorities as well as homosexuals. Now, most of us would say he is a racist or uneducated, etc. Do we agree with his actions? No. But we can try to understand the way he is. Take a look at social forces. 1. History. He is in his mid-70s. 2. Culture. He is retired from the military. 3. Environment. He lives in Alabama. Do these factors explain why he is the way he is? It's not that we're condoning his behaviors, but now we can understand them better. Think about this. How many of you think that you would be able to convince your grandmother that same-sex marriages should be legalized? Most of us, unless your grandmother is considered a young grandma or very hip, could talk until we were blue in the face and still never convince grandma. Remember what Berger said. If you are only interested in people, if you can change them, be warned. The goal is not to change grandma, but to change the next generation, to break these cycles. What is the difference between macro and micro? What is a macro level of analysis? What is a micro level of analysis? We are looking at large-scale patterns of behaviors versus small-scale patterns of behaviors. An example. If I were to research the homeless, how would I do it from a macro level of analysis versus a micro level analysis? For macro, I would research the social causes of homelessness. I may ask the question, why is homelessness increasing in our society? I would look at the state of the economy in our society or in things like corporate downsizing. For a micro level analysis, I would observe the homeless and see how they are able to survive. Or I could observe the homeless to see how they interact with one another. Do you see the difference? In the next section, we will be discussing our three main social theories. Two of them are macro theories and one is a micro theory. Over the course of the semester, we will look at each 
social issue from all three perspectives. There are many different types of sociologists. There are sociologists that research social problems and find the causes of problems. There are those that develop solutions to the problems. There are those that implement the solutions. Social workers are a part of the process here. And finally, there are those that evaluate the programs implemented to see if they're actually helping to solve the social problems. As sociologists, we all work together to help address social problems. There is a difference between a personal trouble and a public issue. Personal troubles affect individual people and others who are a part of their lives. A public issue affects a large number of individuals, is typically part of public debate, and requires collective solutions. Public issues are social problems. Defining what is a social problem is complex, as each society varies in terms of values, beliefs, and behaviors. Therefore, what may be considered a social problem in one society or a specific time in history may not be considered a social problem in another society or a different time in history. An objective condition and a subjective concern are two essential elements of every social problem. Objective conditions are the facts, the parts of the social problem that can be observed, evaluated, and measured. Subjective concerns are the feelings that people have about the problem. When classifying an issue as a social problem, we as sociologists are not judging a particular behavior or situation as desirable or undesirable, but simply stating that something is going on, an objective condition, and large numbers of people are upset about it, a subjective concern. Culture plays a major role in defining what is considered a social problem. For those of you who have already taken Social 1, think back to what you learned about deviance. Something is considered deviant when the expectations of behaviors, norms, of a particular group or society are broken. When we say that something is deviant, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is bad or wrong, just that it's not a mainstream behavior in that group or society. Each culture has extensive, very specific, and different cultural norms. Therefore, what is considered deviant in one culture quite often is not considered deviant in another. The United States is very diverse, so what is considered deviant ver may vary greatly, even if the groups are just a block away from one another or just in the house next door. Think about the cultural norms you have learned from your family. Do you know another family that breaks your family's expectations of behaviors, yet it is not deviant to them? For example, in some families, teenagers are permitted to drink a small amount of alcohol, usually wine, on special occasions. Yet in many other families, this behavior is not acceptable. If you come from a family where you were taught that drinking alcohol is only permitted for those who are 21 years old, this other family's behavior would be deviant to you. However, they do not consider themselves deviant. Due to the differences in the ways that we are socialized and our social location, there is controversy in terms of what is deemed a social problem. For instance, think about these issues. Is physician-assisted suicide a social problem or a solution to a social problem? Is abortion a social problem or a solution to a social problem? Is affirmative action a social problem or a solution to a social problem? The major social institutions, which include family, education, religion, politics, and economics, are responsible for teaching us the important values, norms, beliefs, and behaviors of our society. These social institutions also give us group membership. We each belong to several different groups, a family group, educational group, religious group, political party, and social class. These institutions are also responsible, or should be responsible, for the collective action that is required to solve the social problems that our society endures.